Good morning, everybody. Conti we will continue the biology topic. Yesterday, we studied about uh, the digestive gland named as liver. And today, class, I will discuss about the next gland. It's called a pancreatic gland. Okay? Pancreatic gland. Yesterday, I said that the digestive gland is present. Uh, two glands are there. One is above, that is the liver. And the second gland is uh, below, that is uh, pancreas. When it's coming to this pancreatic gland, or we can also call it as a pancreas, this gland is named as mixed gland. Okay? And it looks like as leaf-like structure. Leaf-like structure. It is present below, below the pancreas. Actually, why this gland is called as a mixed? Actually, what is the meaning of the mixed gland? Mixed. The two other substances, mixes, we'll call it as it's a mixed substance. Two are more than. So here, the mixed gland uh, called pancreas, it shows two types of actions. What are that actions means? One is, it, it has exocrine part and the second one is endocrine part. Children, this uh, uh, two, uh, question is very, very important for the two marks. Why pancreas is called as a mixed gland? What is the role of this pancreatic juice and uh, how it will be acts? Okay, the mixed gland called as exocrine and uh, endocrine part. Exocrine part, here it produces enzymes endocrine part it produces hormones okay you heard about this endocrine glands and endocrine part during uh, class 8 endocrine part endocrine glands produces all the time hormones okay these hormones directly they releases into the Let's steam and it shows an action. That particular topic we are going to learn in uh, next topic that is called as control and coordination. When it's coming to the exocrine part, exocrine part is producing or releasing enzymes. And releasing enzymes like pepsin. Once again, the same enzymes will be repeat uh, how what they produced in the stomach by the gastric glands. And these uh, uh, pancreatic cells also produces the, uh, the same, uh, one enzyme extra and the remaining two are the same. Pepsin, lipase and trypsin. Okay. Exocrine part of the pancrea, uh, pancreas produces pepsin, lipase and trypsin. And endocrine part produces the hormones. What are those hormones means? Hormones like insulin and glucagon. Shall I repeat once? Enzymes like pepsin, lipase and trypsin. Hormones like glucagon and insulin. Okay. Now we will study what is the function of these uh, uh, enzymes. Okay. It is coming to this uh, pancreatic enzyme which is released. Pepsin. We already studied in gastric glands, pepsin acts on the proteins. And there the proteins are converted, converted into peptones. So here the exocrine part of the pancreas function is pepsin acts on proteins and converts and converts into peptones. Okay, next. Lipase, as usual, if any undigested fat is reached to this particular region, duodenum region, so lipase acts on fats and it converts into fatty acids. Okay, next. And the last one, trypsin. Trypsin acts on peptones and finally, it is produced or uh, converted into amino acids. Okay. This is the function of exocrine part of the pancreas. Okay. 
Now let us come, uh, come to the endocrine part. Endocrine part is releasing two hormones. One is insulin and the second one is glucagon. Okay. I, I hope you know about the insulin. The deficiency of the insulin results. Which does this children? Yes, you all know that the deficiency results diabetes. Okay, when, if the insulin is there in our body and it converts the glucose into other uh, energy sources and it will make that energy supply continuously. The deficiency of the insulin, what will happen? The glucose will not convert and it will be eliminated outside of our body along with the urinal passes. That condition we will call it as uh, diabetes, diabetes insipidus. Two diabetes are there, one is diabetes insipidus and second one is a diabetes mellitus. The deficiency of the insulin results, uh, the disease named as diabetes mellitus. The deficiency of the vasopressin hormone the results, the disease named as uh, diabetes insipidus. That we will study later. Okay, so insulin conversion, it will be on, it acts on the glucose and it will be converts in the form of an energy. Okay, yes. Whenever you take the diet, the, uh, the diet conversions it will be takes place in three ways. Okay, well, uh, some, amount, uh, the, uh, some amount of the diet it will be useful for the energy. If it is an energy, more uh, excess energy, that ener excess energy it will be convert in the body in the form of the fat and it will be stored whenever you are in the starvation, that fat, the, the reserve food only you will use to our body. Okay, a little amount, uh, amount uh, it will be stored in the form of the glycosin. Shall I repeat once? Glucose conversions, it will be helpful for to release an energy. Excess means, excess means it converts into fats and it converts in the form of the glycosin. Okay, yes. So, whenever you are in the, during the starvation, what will happen means, uh, glu this glucagon acts on glycosin and it converts back into the glucose and so that and we get an once again energy resources during the time of starvation if it is short time. If it is a prolonged of course we, do, we know that what will happen. If it is a, a short time starvation nothing will happen to our body. Why? Because our body has reserved products in the form of uh, fat and in the form of the glycosin. So, whenever this, there is no supply of an energy, this glucagon acts on the glycosin and it converts back into the glucose and the energy supply will be takes place to the body. Children, is it clear? So, the main function of this pancreas is, it is helping like as an, uh, by releasing the enzymes and it is acting like as an exocrine part and by releasing the hormones and it acts like as an endocrine part. That is the reason this particular gland is called as mixed gland. Children, I hope it is clear for you why pancreas is called as a mixed gland I explain and what are the uh, functions, enzymes and the hormones will be released and we named them and I explained also uh, the functions. Okay children, yes. The next point is the cells which are present in pancreas are called as islets of Langerhans's. Islets of Langerhans. Yesterday we studied the new cells. The cells which are pre uh, present in the liver I explained. Those cells are called as an hepatocytes. And these hepatocyte cells produces the bile juice. The, uh, the islets of Langerhans produces pancreatic juice and that pancreatic juice consists of enzymes as well as the hormones. Is it clear children? Yes, that's it. Okay, so these two glands present over the duodenum, one is above and another one is below. Okay, yes, through the pyloric sphincter, through the pyloric sphincter, whenever the food will be passes into this particular duodenum, this is U-shaped structure, here the sphincter it will be present and from here the food chyme it will be reaches and the top we can see uh, the liver and, and we can say the below, the duct, this is called as uh, uh, pancreatic duct. Pancreatic duct, the leaf-like structure I said. So this pancreatic duct religious 
religious, the pancreatic juice over this. So now there is a certain action takes place and that uh, digested food, the digested food in the form of the chyme which will be reaches to the, uh, the next part that is small as an small intestine. Okay children, is it clear? Yes. So let me say about the next part, small intestine. Where is coming to this small, uh, don't worry, I'll give these points later. Otherwise you can uh, write by seeing the video also. Some people are doing that and just you follow that. Okay, so the next, the next gland, next part in the human digestive system is small intestine. Small intestine. Okay, there is another name for the small intestine and it's also called as ileum. I-E-L-U-M. Ileum. Okay, this is uh, called tube-like structure. Okay, approximately uh, the 6 meters in length, 6 to 7, it goes like that. It's a very coiled uh, structure. Small intestine produces intestinal juices. Intestinal juices. Here, I'll say the one uh, IIT based question here. This intestinal juices, will also call it as uh, succus entricus. What is the name of uh, the juices? We can also call it as succus entricus or uh, entricanase also we can say. Succus entricanase. This succus entricanase releases more than 10 enzymes. So far we studied the enzymes uh, uh, very few. In mouth only one enzyme that is called as thylene aramylase. And in gas, uh, in the stomach, there are three enzymes, pepsin, lipase and mucin. And the next, uh, we studied about uh, pancreas, only the three enzymes, pepsin, lipase and the trypsin. There are no enzymes in esophagus, as well as, and uh, uh, pharynx. So, but whereas coming to the small intestine, the succus endocrines religious more than 10 enzymes and these enzymes are like this. Maltase, sucrase, galactase, AAC, AAC will come. Okay, lipase. Once again, the lipase. So, uh, the final one, uh, peptidase. Peptidase, nucleotidase, nucleotidase, these are etc. So these are all the uh, uh, more than 10 enzymes it will be released by this uh, um, succus centricus juice and it will be released by the intestinal glands. Okay, small intestine is provided with an intestinal glands and intestinal glands and these intestinal glands produce intestinal juices and these intestinal juices is named as succus centricinase and this centricinase contains more than the 10 uh, enzymes and the action of all these enzymes the total digestion the digestion of the food it will be complete in the small intestine is it clear yes it completes in the small intestine and it ready to absorb how this absorption takes place and before that let me say about uh, we can divide the, this uh, 6 meters length this small intestine into 3 parts. Okay, first part is where duodenum is open. See, where this, this duodenum is open into the small intestine. From here it con continues. Okay, first, first reason is duodenal region. Okay, and the second one is the middle portion. The middle one we call it as Jesuma. Children, this is also IC class, IC points. Uh, middle part we'll call it as a jesumum. And where the small intestine, see this reason, where the small intestine will be open. Where the small intestine will be open into the, uh, the large intestine. 
that reason is called as ilium. So that is the reason I said small intestine is also known as ilium part. Is it clear children? Yes. First one is duodenal region, second one is azizumum and the third one is uh, the ilium region. Okay. Yes. Next. This, uh, the walls, the digestion completes, I said no, the digestion completes. The digestion completes in small intestine and it is ready for absorption. Okay. When it is ready for the absorption, how this absorption takes place means the walls of the small intestine, walls of uh, the small intestine is provided with the finger-like, finger-like structures and these finger-like structures we we'll call it as villi. Many numerous finger-like projections will be present in the wall of the small intestine. Okay, so this villi is made up of with the blood capillaries. Children, one, uh, one main point remember here. Wherever the blood capillaries are there, there is a chance for the exchange of anything gases like gases and at the same time it is helpful for the absorption. With the help of these blood capillaries, uh, the digestive food is absorbed by the, uh, the walls of the uh, small intestine. They are called, nothing but called as an villi and with the help of this uh, villi, what will happen means the absorption it will be complete. So, the directly the absorbed food mixes in the blood and then we will get an energy. So, see, they don't think that uh, after taking the food immediately we will get an energy. This process, of course, unknowingly, uh, unknowingly this uh, digestion is taking place in our body and to get an energy we require certain time. So, the complex one, it will be converted into the simple and then finally it will be the absorption it will be done in the uh, small intestine with the help of finger-like projections called as villi. So, villi is, this point is important, uh, bit this is, villi is made up of with blood capillaries, blood capillaries and so the absorption it will be complete. So, whenever, <coughs> excuse me, whenever the food is absorbed like that, for every uh, uh, absorptions, uh, what will happen? There will be the leftover product also. Best example I can say, whenever you are using the, uh, the chalk and writing on the board, what will happen? When you are writing, there will be the leftover product. The powder, it will be settled over it. Exactly like this, whenever the food will be absorbed here, there will be the leftover product and that leftover product will call it as an undigested food. So, undigested food. So, now where this undigested food goes? So, that undigested food goes into the next part and that next part we will call it as the large intestine. Okay? So, let me complete this topic today and once uh, then we will reach, we will move to the other topic. So, the last part, the last part is large intestine. Okay, when it's coming to this large intestine, and there is a other name for the large intestine also, colon. This is also called as colon. Uh, compared to the, uh, the length, they are short in nature. The large intestine is a little bit short. Uh, approximately maybe uh, 3 centimeters uh, width. Uh, uh, width will be 3 centimeters. The uh, small intestine is narrow and here... Uh, uh, we can say 3, 3 to just like that approximately. If it is wrong, I will say the later correct one. Okay, yes. The large intestine, what, what is happening in the large intestine? Let me say that. The undigested food along with that, the water also reaches. Undigested food plus water. Okay, yes. So, here also, this short note also is an important. Name the two organs where the villi is present in the human digestive system. A numerous villi is present in the small intestine, I said. A few, not like this, a numerous, a few villi are present in even in the large intestine or uh, intestine also. The villi which are present in the small intestine is helps for absorption of the food. The villi which is present in the large intestine is helps for the absorption of the water. So the water it will be gets absorbed. And then the undigested food only it will be left and it will move to the forward direction. Now again we will get the one more question here. 
how this moment it will be takes place as these are all uh, uh, certain uh, the narrow tube like structures how this moment it will be occur okay how this moment it will be occur means how the moments are taking place in the esophagus and you are name that what are the moments are seen in the esophagus yes they are correct peristaltic movements they are just like as a wave like movements so with the help of this wave like movements the undigested food the undigested food uh, the move uh, reaches move to the forward direction and it comes to the uh, the rectum this is called as a rectum and it will be comes out along with the anus here one more point you have to learn here anus is anus is provided with anal sphincter so anal sphincter whenever the waste it comes it will be opens afterwards it will be closes okay yes so the anus is guarded with anal sphincter through this anal sphincter when the anal sphincter is open and so the waste product it will be comes out okay children almost we covered all the points in the human digestive system one short note is left here and just let me complete that what uh, the finger like projection is present here this is an important point that is called as an appendix so actually i said that an undigested food it will be moves to the forward direction by chance or by mistake by mistake if it comes to the downward direction so the undigested food reaches to the uh, the appendix and then it will be swells up and it creates a, uh, the pain maybe you know that that pain only we'll call it as 24 hours pain that is nothing but we'll call it as an appendicitis okay so there is no use for the human beings by having this uh, appendix this particular uh, part we we'll call it as vestigial organ okay as there is a no use whenever we will suffer with this type of uh, acute uh, or uh, the long pain so the doctor will be will remove this an uh, appendicitis so here one more short answer this appendix is well developed it is a well developed in herbivores not in uh, the human beings in human beings we consider it as a vestigial organ so children one application question is there at the end of this particular topic why the uh, herbivores as i said about the herbivores why the herbivores have or you can say long longer small intestine whereas the carnivores they have shorter small intestine did you get my point why the herbivore has the longer short in, uh, small intestine why the carnivores have a shorter small intestine this is an application question one mark uh, i will give this answer tomorrow otherwise let let me say that answer i'll say just i'll stop it herbivores they has to digest uh, what is it called as a cellulose part that is the reason uh, the it is a very hard substance that's the reason herbivores they have the longer small intestine whereas the carnivores the diet is the proteins proteins they digest very easily that is the reason they have the shorter small intestine the cell children the waste product which will become so the through the anus is also called as defecation okay that's all for today and again we'll move meet tomorrow with the another new topic bye complete